my enemies have a secret pact. They think I don't know about it, but I do. The pact is, on the day I die, they will shine the bat signal over the city. It was the Joker's idea. A light in the sky to commemorate me. A bat hanging upside down at rest. Seeing it now, I can't shake the feeling I'm dead already. Narrating my funeral from deep in the underworld. Batman stands before the court of the Owls, who mock him and delight in their enemy learning of their return. But Bruce is unimpressed and says he lets the Owls regrow and return exactly as much as the detective allows them to. But Batman isn't here for a fight, and instead is here for answers. The Joker's doctor claims to have harvested a substance from Gotham hundreds of years ago, and only the Owls had the means and the desire to undertake such a task. Bruce wants to know if they found the immortality serum all those years ago, and if that's what they used to power their sinister operatives known as the Talents. The Owls admit they did seek out this immortal substance, but all they ever found was a corrupted version. The serum, however impure, is sufficient enough to power their Talents, but it is not nearly as undiluted as the substance within the Joker's blood. Batman asks for help. Assuming the Owls have as much to lose with the destruction of Gotham City as anyone else if the Joker is successful with his plans. But the Owls are not threatened by this. They direct Batman's attention up to an inverted model of the city. The Owls build everything upside down here before they erect anything in the actual Gotham City to remind themselves that Gotham is greater than anyone in the court. The clown can burn the city to the ground. The Owls will simply rebuild a more pure and cleansed city on top of its ashes. Realizing he will get no help here, Batman angrily destroys the model and brings it crashing down on the court. The Dark Knight then waits, knowing full well who else is out in the maze with him. Sure enough, one of the very first Talons appears before Bruce and sentences him to death on behalf of the Owl Court. Batman accepts that he may die one day, maybe even here. But first, he wants answers to just one question. This Talon was here in Gotham 400 years ago. Was he here too? Was the Pale Man in Gotham so long ago? We cut to the city streets three hours later, and it looks like Batman is being overwhelmed by infected citizens of Gotham. The story flashes back to Batman leaving the city's sewers after his encounter with the Owls. Bruce learns that while he was gone, the Joker infiltrated the Batcave, stole a bunch of trophies and memorabilia, and chopped off Alfred's hand when the loyal butler attacked the clown. Alfred will be fine, but using his new collection of Batman's trophies, the Joker has begun a parade in the middle of the city. Bruce realizes that the Joker is taunting him with the answer. If Batman wants to save the city, he'll have to get the immortality serum from the clown's own spinal column. With that, Bruce devises a plan and begins to set it in motion. Two hours later, Batman has gathered his allies to prepare for an assault on the Joker's parade. But there are too many infected citizens in the way, and the five allies have no chance of reaching the Joker. But that isn't the whole plan, and Batman reveals that he is using the inverted bat signal to gather some very unlikely allies. Though Batman's friends are mortified, the villains have as much to lose as the heroes, and are actually willing to work together. With an alliance of hero and villain alike, this unlikely band begins their assault on the Joker. The clown looks on, delighted and apparently anticipating this exact move. With a smile, he announces it's time for his best trick of all.
Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Arden and this is my recap and review of Batman number 39. Alright, so it's another solid Batman comic. I've talked at length about Endgame at this point. With the second to last issue in the series, it's safe to say this has been a fun story arc. Most of what I've said before about Endgame applies to this comic too. I just adore this series for its story and art, and while this comic wasn't quite as vividly awesome as the stuff we were getting out of Batman a few issues ago, I still find this plot fascinating and very unpredictable. And some pretty cool stuff happened in this issue. Poor Alfred keeps getting horribly injured these days, and losing a hand will no doubt be tough for Batman's closest confidant and friend, who was already pretty injured at the beginning of this story. I also love how this comic nicely ties itself together with the initial narration regarding the bat signal being directly related to this comic's ending. That's a well-constructed story, and something I always like to admire. My only gripe is that after reading this comic and seeing how pointless the appearance of the Owl Court was, I do wish Endgame was only 5 parts instead of 6. There's enough extra content in this story that it's nothing but a waste of time, and the last two issues could have easily been condensed into one, which would have made for a much more exciting and polished story. But, whatever. It's an awesome and fun story, and I can't wait for the finale. Seeing friend and foe unite to take on the Joker and save the city is pretty cool, and I hope we get something great out of Endgame's... well, ending. <laughs> There's also one thing I have neglected to talk about at all, which are the bonus stories of inmates telling their experiences with the Joker included at the back of all the Endgame comics. I've been really leaving them out of my recaps and reviews because I feel they really broke the flow of my Endgame coverage. They have nothing really meaningful to add to Endgame, and I'm not really a fan of the art coming out of these bonus stories. So I don't really care for them, but I like Endgame enough on its own that I haven't really let these bonus stories interfere with my opinion or coverage of an otherwise solid Batman tale. And that's what's nice about these being bonuses. You can read these short little things and decide for yourself, while I stick to the main story and not let little bonus stuff affect my opinion of the comic book's core content. So it's really no big deal, and hey, it's bonus content on a comic that the writer Scott Snyder managed to negotiate for a cheaper cover price on behalf of Batman fans everywhere. That's awesome, and in a world where $5 comics are increasingly becoming a norm, DC and Snyder deserve a lot of praise for this move. So yes, like all the other issues of Endgame so far, I'm going to give this one a recommendation. Right now, this is my favorite DC series, with Batman and Robin being a close second. I'm just loving these Batman comics, and I really think you should check out Endgame for yourself. Let me know what you think is going to happen in the big finale through the comments section. Personally, the way Endgame is going, I have a feeling that Joker's status as an immortal will deliberately be left ambiguous, and I really like that approach. This way you can have your own interpretation. So while I like the idea of an immortal Joker who's always kind of been around, this isn't necessarily going to be canon, so if that idea bothers you, it's perfectly sensible that you can look at this immortality thing as an elaborate hoax on behalf of Joker. I find that idea fascinating, and there's something really sinister and appealing about a Joker who has always been a part of Gotham, more than Bruce ever could be. But in either case, I'm anticipating a big ending with lots of surprises, and it should be a lot of fun. If you want to learn more about comics, you should check out our website, Facebook, and Twitter pages. And finally, don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.